everybody, this is episode five of Transit Trends, and I'm Jeff Wood. And I'm Erica Brennis. You know, Jeff, the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about transportation and technology. And on this show, we wanted to talk about what is at the root of the traffic, transportation, mobility issue, and that is proper planning. So we're talking decades and decades ago when they started building the downtowns, the businesses, the business centers, the neighborhoods, the roadways, they're now left scrambling to find a way to ease congestion, and it's not easy, and it's really expensive. So we sat down with Gabe Klein. Gabe is a transportation expert, the former DC and Chicago transportation commissioner, author of the book, Startup City. He's an entrepreneur and just really all around a great guy to hang out with. So we got his take on this planning predicament that we found ourselves in. I'm a big believer in high quality, high capacity transit. And I'm a big believer that high quality transit and transit oriented uh, development create a high quality of life for people, right? And so I think when we talk about transit, we often get caught up in talking about moving people. And that might sound sort of weird, but what we're really doing is creating great places when you connect land use to transportation. And when you're creating great places, people ideally will not have to travel far because you have enough density, you have enough services, hopefully their job is close by. And I think our sort of sprawling transportation system is a function of a broken land use policy or set of policies uh, in many places. We haven't spent the money that we should to keep up our transit systems and now they're billions of dollars behind. So now most of us are usually running behind because we're stuck in traffic. <laughs> For the majority of the people, the car is the predominant way that they move. And so when you try to say to somebody, like this is really more about psychology than transportation, but you, you try to say, say to somebody, look, this is what the rail line could be, they, they haven't seen it for themselves. Maybe they haven't traveled to Europe. Maybe they only have seen the one little track you guys have. You go to somebody in Europe and they're like, oh, of course, that's just what we do here. And they think the car is sort of outmoded and old school. I think that our frame of reference is a little bit warped and we have to realize that, like, how do you actually get people to want to ride transit? How do you get people to vote, to tax themselves, to build more transit in a either Sunbelt or a Southern city where traditionally everybody's driven. But when given the option, people will use good transportation systems. With great high quality transportation options comes great quality of life. There's a recognition that there's an ecosystem and transportation in many ways is right smack in the middle of it. So whether your focus is on livability or, and sustainability, which often go hand in hand, or whether it's about jobs, um, without a great transportation system, um, it's going to be very hard to lure the talent or to create an environment that's healthy for people. Okay, let's give a little context and history. Jeff, really, why were cities set up in a way that ultimately required cars and highways to get into downtown? Looking back, was that poor planning? I don't think anybody thought that they were planned poorly. They, they wanted more space um, back in post-World War II folks wanted more space and more uh, a bit the ability to spread out and I think it was a bit crowded in cities and not a lot of people owned homes, there's a lot of renting. So what happened was we built all these freeways, we built all these roads, we built all this infrastructure and then we built also the policy infrastructure to continue that for the next 50, 60 years and I think in recent years, in the last 20 years or so, I think we started realizing that that wasn't the right way to go and I think even Eisenhower realized that building freeways through cities wasn't the best idea at the time but they did it anyways. So, you know, now we have all this transportation infrastructure that we don't really know, you know, what it's going to happen. We're going to keep perpetuating the issue. Um, but right now, I think that we're starting to learn a little bit more about, you know, what, what actually we should be doing, which is prioritizing people over vehicles. Do you think as a collective whole that we really can build ourselves out of this mess? Or are we just sort of going to see these like one-off cities that you know, like Portland that invests a lot into its mass transit system, or are we kind of just like stuck in this traffic mess? 
I think it depends on the priorities of each city. Los Angeles, for example, is really focused on their 2035 plan, which basically is, is reducing the need to measure level of service at intersections. And what that means is that they're going to stop measuring cars and start measuring people, but also it means that we're going to get less you know, pollution and more access for buses, for cars, for bikes, for people. And so you know, I, I think I agree with you in the sense that um, you know, I think we're going to see certain cities that are going to focus on these issues and maybe other cities aren't going to. But I think in the end, a lot of cities are going to see that their value is tied up in the ability of people to access jobs. Uh, the labor markets for, for employers is going to be really important. And so as soon as you overbuild the freeways and you get into a situation where you have way too much congestion and you have l very little access and you start thinking about the ways to actually fix that problem, you're going to see lots of cities take this this approach. But right now we only have a few cities that are focused on trying to really get people to where they want to go without having to focus on that single person occupancy vehicle. All right, so that wraps up episode five of Transit Trends. Thanks so much for taking part in this conversation here on this show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to Jeff's daily newsletter. It's such a great resource. Keep sharing the show on social media using the hashtag Transit Trends. And if there's anything that you want to see discussed, please leave a comment below. Again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys again next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.